String theory takes you before the Big Bang, before Genesis itself. And what does string theory say? It says that there is a multiverse of universes. Where did the Big else. Bang come from? Thing. We talked about string theory and the book called the Sefer Yitzira. In the process of string theory, I've been told that initially they thought of string theories having five dimensions, then they came up with a system of 11 dimensions, then 26 dimensions. So I just want to bring to your attention the following. According to the oldest books in the Kabbalah, there are 10 spherot. 10 spherot. But the 10 spherot aren't all that exist, but the 10 spherot do create five systems because each of the 10 spheres divide into pairs. And these pairs create systems, which create, by the way, dimensions. And the 10 spheres then create five dimensions, which is Olam, Shana, Nefesh. Olam is, is the three-dimensioned universe of space. Shana is time, that's the fourth dimension. And then there's a fifth dimension, Keter Malchus, which is called Nefesh, or soul, or will, or quality, quality of life, if you will. But it's the fifth dimension, it's a real dimension of good and evil. There are five dimensions mentioned in the Sefer Yitzir, written almost 2,000 years ago. Ten spheres, together with the Ein Sof, ten spheres with the Ein Sof, which, according to some, is the Keter, equals 11, which is your 11 dimensions, and then the name of God that is most associated with the Creator is the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He. And anybody who knows uh, the numerology of Kabbalah knows that the Tetragrammaton is equal in number to 26, which is, according to my sources, the latest... Um, form of string theory that there are 26 dimensions. And so string theory somehow or other parallels the knowledge of Kabbalah. Is that just is that just a coincidence? You be the judge. <laughs> And then the processing or the logic aspect, that's why. And then explaining to others exactly the steps you took to reach your conclusion, that's the how. So you have who, what, where, when, gathering the information, why is processing the information, removing contradictions and fallacies, and then how is explaining it. And so this is key, and they want to take people away from this process and, and tell people, you know, like quantum... The, Quantum physics is a huge con. These guys like Amit Swami. I mean, Amit Swami was even on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast talking about how quantum physics was a religion, that nobody in the field agrees on what these things mean. I mean, you know, the reason why none of them agree is because they're selling a religion and it's just a cult, you know. And if you try to get down into the facts of like the Copenhagen interpretation and all of this, you see that it's a total farce. Now, there is some value in some of the mathematics of of uh, quantum mechanics, but quantum physics is essentially a big uh, Kabbalistic fraud that was uh, promoted by uh, Albert Einstein and these these clowns. Uh, Albert Einstein stole most of his theories from, uh, for instance, uh, the U.S. Patent Office when he worked there. And in fact, there's a, a very good book. It's like 28, 26, 2800 pages, 2,600 pages by uh, John Bjerknes called the manufacture and sale of St. Einstein. But basically, quantum physics, they just took the Kabbalah and they repackaged it as, as, as a pseudoscience and then sold it to, to the universities and the public. But it's really there to, to keep people confused and to make you think that you can't trust your own five senses to look up facts. And well, you know, there's 11 dimensions. We can't know anything. Might as well just give up, you know. And so you get all of this uh, nonsense coming out of that. But when you understand the onus of proof and not arguing the arbitrary, the onus of proof means that if I make a claim, it's totally on me 
to provide all of the citations and evidence to support it. And if I don't provide it, it's known as arguing the arbitrary and it's dismissed by default. Okay, so if I say, you know, there's green aliens, you know, coming down tomorrow and I don't provide any evidence, it's dismissed by default. Now, some people might say, but what if there really are? Well, we can speculate all day long with no evidence about anything, but what happens is we waste our lives on speculation and not knowing anything. So if we stick to what we can actually verify and look for the facts on, then what happens is we, you know, after several months, we begin to see how religions and cults and things use this this area out of the commons. This is where we get common sense from, out of the commons, or, you know, if, if you think of, you know, getting on the same page and verifying that the words, you know, if you and I are looking at a book and we both turn to page 160, we both should be able to verify the exact words on that page. And then we can say, yep, it says that, it says that, it says that. That's getting on the same page and we can verify exactly what it says. You know, it, you know, like one person isn't going to be reading about dogs and cats and the other person uh, out of the same book going to be reading about quantum physics. But this is what, you know, most of these new agers and quantum physics pushers want people to believe is that, you, you know, even if you went to a copy of the exact same book and looked on page 160, you couldn't actually verify what it says. So it's just a world of total insanity, like uh, like Roger Rabbit land or something like that, right? And so this is what they want people to believe, is that we live in a world of Roger Rabbit quantum physics nonsense. And so the whole idea is to break people's self-esteem and trust for their own five senses to be able to go out and verify and look up citations and know the truth for themselves on each specific topic. Now, some people come up and say, you can't know the truth. Well, what they're doing is this is known as the lesser to the greater fallacy. You know, I can know that one plus one is two. I can look at and verify that that is true. I can look up a citation in a book, verify that that is true. And then what they'll do is they'll take that to, well, you can't know the grand truth of the whole universe. So therefore, we should just speculate out our butts all day about anything that comes to mind. And this is, you know, people that that refuse to look at facts and information, refuse to read things before they judge them. Typically what they'll do from there is they fall back on channeling and this kind of behavior for any information and then uh, they have a collapse in self-esteem and uh, they, they end up not trusting themselves and that's really the intended goal of all of that. Yes, the idea that knowledge is all subjective and there's no one universal truth obviously aids and abets those in power because there's, right. there's no such thing as truth. We can never discern what they're doing. Right. Quantum physics is essentially a big uh, Kabbalistic fraud that was uh, promoted by uh, Albert Einstein and these, these clowns. Quantum physics is a huge con 